All right. Shh, shh. Okay, so uh, sixth period, I uh, had to leave at lunch for a thing, so I'm just recording what we did uh, fourth period. Um, you guys just sit back and uh, listen. Um, if you can't hear, just ask the sub to turn the volume up. If there's something that you missed, then she can pause it and replay it and all kinds of fun things like that, okay? Um, all right, so we are going to start in on section 8.4 today. We're still working with rational expressions. The good news is... We're backing up a little bit, and instead of talking about things like discontinuities and asymptotes and uh, x and y intercepts, which are closely related to the graphs, which I know you guys don't enjoy doing, um, we're going to uh, focus on the algebra surrounding rational expressions. So we're going to learn first how to multiply and divide them. Then we're going to learn how to uh, add and subtract them. And then we are going to uh, wrap up the chapter by learning how to use them to solve uh, equations. All of you guys need to put your phones away right now. I'm not sure why that's happening. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, shh. so we're just going to dive right into this, start right in with an example. Um, the good news, bad news is... The good news, bad news is uh, that this is really, 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 really heavily focused on factoring, okay? Uh, and that's good news for those of you who are good at factoring. It's bad news if you're not great at factoring, but in reality, it'll be good because you're going to get lots of practice, all right? So, so if we're starting with x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x squared minus 3x minus 10, all we're doing is... Factoring and canceling and factoring and canceling and factoring and canceling. Now, some of you might have the uh, impulse to try to cancel the x squares, okay? But when you're canceling things, what you're basically doing is division, okay? And division is the inverse of what? Multiplication. multiplication. This right here is addition, not multiplication. This right here is subtraction, not multiplication. So you cannot cancel those x squareds because they're not being multiplied. If, however, you take this and rewrite it in its factored form, factoring is a way of writing what? Multiplication. multiplication. So now, if you get it in its multiplied form, you can do some canceling. Okay? So this should be fairly simple. We've done a lot of these. What goes in the front of each parentheses? X. And then I am looking for two numbers that multiply together to be 10 and add together to be 7. So that's x plus 5 and x plus 2. Does it matter what order I write those in? No, because multiplication is the same uh, either way you do it. All right, so that's over x squared minus 3x minus 10. So before I can cancel that, I have to rewrite it as a multiplication problem. So what goes in front? x and x. Two numbers that multiply together to be, okay, negative, good, I want it to be negative 3, so the bigger number has to be negative, so this is going to be negative 5 and positive 2, okay, uh, no, because now we can do some canceling, because we have it written as multiplication, I have x plus 5 times x plus 2, divided by x minus 5 times x plus 2. What cancels? The x plus 2s two. cancel because they are the same. So what we're doing is a fancy form of 4 over 8 equals 1 half. When you are doing that, what you are really doing is you're rewriting 4 as 4 times 1, you're rewriting 8 as 4 times 2, and then the 4s cancel so you get 1 half. That's the same thing that we're doing here. We're just doing it with variables instead of just plain old numbers. So we took this and rewrote it as a multiplication problem, and then we canceled the factors that were the same. x plus 5 and x minus 5 do not cancel because they are not the same. Why did you put the 5 in the Why did I? Hold on one question at a time. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in, okay? In the end, you're still going to end up with x plus 5 over x minus 5, okay? And that's the final answer, okay? 
Uh, I was just showing you a simpler example of when you're reducing fractions, that's what we're doing up here. So, so this, this process and this process are exactly the same, okay? So that is our answer, okay? Um, all right, I'm not really worried about the restrictions on the variable part, uh, but you should know based on what we did already, what um, numbers could I not plug in for x? I could not plug in negative 2 because, why not? Oh, okay. You can't plug in negative 2 because that makes this be 0, and I can't divide by 0. So then I also, hold on a second, I'll talk to you about that. So I also can't plug in 5, okay? So the restrictions on the variable are that x could not equal negative 2 and x can't equal 5. Right, it's the discontinuities of the function, okay? Now, Josie said that this one canceled, which means it is a removable discontinuity, but it's still a discontinuity, so we can't uh, use those numbers for x, okay? So factor, cancel, factor, cancel, factor, cancel, factor, cancel. So there's two answers for the kind of problem? Well, yeah, because they asked us two questions. They said, what is this in simplest form? So this is it in simplest form. State any restrictions on the variable. These are my restrictions on the variable. Okay? All right, let's play again. Um, yeah, we're going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to do uh, B first because B is pretty closely related to what we just did on the last problem. And then we'll talk about some different kinds of uh, factoring that have given some of you uh, some issues. So will you please on your own first to start with factor x squared plus 2x minus 8, and then factor x squared minus 5x plus 6. So do that on your own real quick to practice this. I'm not, I didn't say anything. Yep. Yep. Factor the top and the bottom, and then the second step is cancel the things that are the same. Okay, Macy, what'd you get when you factored the top? X plus four and X minus two, and that is because that's okay. I talked about that already. You can do them in the opposite order, and it's still okay. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, so that works. And then 4 minus 2 is 2, so that works no, also. I I got X okay. minus 4. Oh, that's not okay, because you need a positive number in the middle there, Josie. So that means the bigger number has to be positive. All right? Um, Austin, what would you get for the bottom? Okay, well, let's do that together then and put away your chemistry. Uh, what I want to talk to Austin, though. Uh, so, Austin, I need two numbers that multiply together to give me positive 6 and add together to give negative 5. Austin, just him. Good. Negative 2 and negative 3. Okay? Because negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, but negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. Okay? Right. Because when you're multiplying, two negatives make a positive, but when you're adding, two negatives make a negative. Okay? Okay, so what can cancel? The x minus 2s. All right, so like Maddie was asking about, the first part of the question says, what is the rational expression in simplest form? That is x plus 4 over x minus 3. Hang on just a second, Piper. The second part of the question says, state any restrictions on the variables. Based on this factored form, what can x not equal? 2 and 3. Okay, Piper? Okay, she got it. Uh, all right, let's go backwards and let's do uh, A now. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier maybe because we're not doing the whole parentheses thing. All right, um, and so I'm going to sort of over-exaggerate this uh, to show you what the process is. Some of you aren't going to have to go through all of these steps to solve this problem. Um, what can 24 factor into? Uh, okay, 4 and 6. Okay, let's start with that. Um, and then x cubed means what? 
No, x cubed means x times x times x, right? And then y squared means y times y. Times y. All right. Uh, then we could factor the bottom, this negative 6, but I already have a 6 on top, so I don't need to uh, factor that at all. I'm just going to leave that as negative 6. And then x squared factors into what? x times x. And then y cubed factors into y times y times y. So now I've made this into a big old multiplication problem, so now I can do some uh, canceling. So the 6's cancel. Uh, so I'm going to leave the negative there. You're right. Okay, so I'm not canceling the negative. Good point. Uh, what cancels from the x's? Two of the x's from the top cancel with these two x's on the bottom. And then what cancels with the y? The two y's on the top cancel with two y's on the bottom. Uh, and so what am I left with then on top? 4x Four. Four. Four over negative y. So that is the expression in simplest form. Okay. Now, some of you could do that, like I said, without writing that all the way out. What is 24 divided by negative 6? Negative 4. That's where the negative 4 comes from. And then what do you do with the exponents when you're dividing them? Subtract them. So 3 minus 2 is an x on top. And then with the y's, 3 minus 2 is a y on the bottom because the bigger number was on the bottom. So if you need to write it all out in factored form and then cancel, then that's fine. But there are some shortcuts that you should know. Um, all right, what are the restrictions on the variables? And this time we have two of them. What value of x would make the bottom equal to 0? 1 is OK, because then 1 times 1 times negative 6 is just negative 6. What did you say, Jennifer? Oh, oh 0. OK, good. Uh, because if I put in 0 for x, then as soon as I multiply by 0, the whole thing is 0. And then I'm dividing by 0, and I can't do that. Okay, not a huge deal. Okay, I'll just try and sort of keep going through that with you, but don't sweat it too much. Okay, uh, I'm just thinking like, what number could I plug in for x that would make the bottom of this thing be zero? And since any time I multiply by zero, then the whole answer is zero. If I put in a zero for x, then negative six times zero times zero, zero done. Okay. So what uh, would that answer be for the y? Also 0. So x can't equal 0 and y can't equal 0 either. Okay? Like I said, that's kind of a little, you know, uh, I, don't know. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right. Uh, then the last one, see, this is a little bit tricky for the factoring um, because I am not going to make a double parentheses on the top. What I'm going to do on the top is I'm going to say, what number goes into 12 and 4 evenly? Three, four. Four. No, four. Four. 3 doesn't go into 4 evenly. 4 goes into both of those evenly, so I'm going to factor out a 4. But thing, things are going to get a little bit weird here. Do you see how this x is negative? I don't like that very much. So I'm actually going to factor out a negative 4. Okay. So when I factor out a negative 4, what is 12 divided by negative 4? Negative 3. And then uh, what's left when I factor a negative 4 out of right positive x? And I always kind of like my x's to be positive. In fact, I hope there are some people in here that even writing negative 3 plus x bothers you. How do you really want to write that? x minus 3. The x usually comes first, and it's usually positive. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as negative 4 times x minus 3. So whenever possible, put the variable first and try and get it to be positive. Okay? Um, all right. Then on the bottom, x squared minus 9 is a special factor pattern that we talked about a couple chapters ago. Difference of two squares. Right. So x squared minus 9 factors into what? Good, x plus 3 and x minus 3, okay? So these are really the four different cases of factoring that you're going to have to be good at. One is when you just have a single term and you can break it down into its individual pieces. The other one is when you're foiling backwards, like these two right here. This is a case where there's a common factor in each one of the terms. In this case, it was negative 4. And then this is the special case of the difference of two squares. If you can do those four different types of factoring, you're going to be in good shape. Okay? 
Nope, we didn't finish. Now that we have it factored, what can cancel? Three. The x minus threes. So this written in simplest form is negative four over x plus three. What are the restrictions on the variable? What can x? Uh, three and negative. Good, x can't equal three or negative three because that would make the bottom of the fraction zero and I can't divide by zero, okay? Okay, so the only other thing we're gonna add on to this today is um, when we have uh, more than one fraction, but we're just doing multiplication, and so the process is exactly the same. So I have x squared plus x minus six over x minus five times x squared minus 25 over x squared plus four x plus three. So the fun part here is now instead of just having two things that I can potentially factor, now I have one, two, three, four things that I can potentially factor. Maddie? Are we putting them, are we like putting it as a term? Like simplifying them both and then multiplying them together? No, we're going we're gonna to factor them and then we're going to cancel them just like we did before. And then they're just going to stay like, like they're They're going to end up like being melded into one problem in the end, okay? Um, all right, so let's factor this uh, top left one first. X squared plus X minus six factors into what? X minus two, X plus three. X minus two, X plus three, okay. What does X minus five factor into? Just stays as X minus five, okay. There's no common factor that I can pull out of there. It's not a difference of two squares. Um, so it's just gonna stay as X minus five. Good, x squared minus five is an example of the difference of two squares, so it's uh, x plus five times x minus five. And then x squared plus four x plus three factors into? X plus three and x plus one, okay? So, like I said, good news, bad news, if you're not good at factoring, that's bad news, but the good news is you're gonna get lots of practice at it, and so hopefully by the end of all of this, you'll be uh, better at it than you were when you started. Um, so now we just start uh, canceling away. So anything that's on the top cancels with anything on the bottom that's the same. So who cancels? The x plus three and the x plus three cancel. Yep, you can do that because this is multiplication right here, Maddie, so you can go across that. And then the x minus five and the x minus fives cancel. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay, so our... Uh, uh, no, what's left on the bottom? One. X plus one. All right, and Maddie has inadvertently asked a really good question. If everything cancels on the bottom, what's on the bottom? One. If everything cancels on the top, what's left on the top? One. Right, exactly, okay? So this is it in uh, simplest form. What are our restrictions on the variable? What can it not equal right here? Five, so x can't equal five. What can't it equal right here? Negative three. And then for this one, it can't equal negative one, okay? So this is simplest form. This is restrictions on the variable. Um, because uh, if you put negative three in there for x, negative three plus three is zero, and you can't divide by zero. Bailey? Uh, you could if you wanted to, but you don't have to. So you could write this as x squared plus 3x minus 10 over x plus 1. Either one of those is fine. Nope, not too bad, right? Just factor and cancel, factor and cancel, factor and cancel. Okay, so we are going to uh, stop there. We're going to talk about dividing tomorrow, but dividing is really, really simple uh, also. Oh, wait, never mind. Isn't that all that's all that's... Okay, so uh, there's your uh, assignment. Have at it. You've got lots of time left to work on it. You should be able to probably get this done before you leave, okay?